Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is your boy, the DoorDash Revolution. Smash that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Mm-hmm. Leave the comments down below. Share this episode and other episodes that I put out previously before this one. The information I'm receiving, I just have to inhale and exhale mm. about it. Topic for discussion today and other YouTube content creators going to be digging deeper on it than me. Uh, they're going to make it look fancy on their thumbnails and all that. And probably Tanner going to get a chance to interview somebody him or Hannibal, you know, but I'm thinking Tanner going to be the one to get picked for for this one. What I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, and I was the first to talk about it on YouTube, and we want to talk about the Matt Maloney saga. It started last year, people, when New York City started cracking down on Grubhub delivery service fee. And I'm just gonna read a little bit, a little bit on it, and I'm gonna tell you where to look for that, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion on it. Yes, my opinion on it. I'm, I'm gonna give you a little facts, and I'm gonna give you a little opinion. I'm gonna give you a little bit of bitter. I'm gonna give you a little bit of sweet. We're gonna try to balance that thing out. New York is passing a series of bills. This is what happened last year to seek to seek one of the gig economy most lucrative fronts for food delivery. New York City Council passed a series of coronavirus relief bills, including two meant to help restaurants during the coronavirus pandemic and crack down on app-based food delivery, a cap on commissions charged by third-party food delivery services and ban on predatory fees for phone calls that don't end in sales. This one is started, people. Um, Grubhub got hit hard on charging the restaurants on telephone fees that didn't have anything to do with deliveries or the ending of delivery calls. Good old boy Matt had to answer up. Yeah, I know he had to come up with a report. He had to go through the media, all of that. You know, I know he had to explain what the heck was going on. Not only that, in his 10 page written statement, he blamed. DoorDash and he blamed Uber Eats for throwing all these di discount prices out and their customers were smart enough not to continue paying those high-end fees. So he started finger pointing, ladies and gentlemen. Now that's my opinion. He started finger pointing. So now it led up to this event that Jet the Acronym 4, Just Eat Takeaway from Denmark, from the Amsterdam of the United Kingdom. One of the major players in the global online food delivery services. Mm -hmm. Turn around, they bought out Grubhub this year. $7.3 billion. Uber Eats had a bid on it. And then they backed away. So this company, as, as back in the days we used to say, had, they got that stout money. Those country folks used to say back in the day, he got that stout money. Uh-huh. And they bought them out. Matt Post have been joining forces with the CFO 
of just. Both of them had been in the business a little over 10 decades. Then Matt, all of a sudden now, he's leaving Grubhub. This is my take on it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been a direction, dealing with the direction of being a maintenance supervisor. Mm-hmm. I done been an operational director before at a mall that had 52 stores, managers and all of that, original managers and district managers of each company. Mm-hmm. Now, I can kind of understand when, uh, it's just like I'm going to use for example, because apartment complexes buy and sell all the time. And I was the maintenance director at one. Then a company came in and bought it out. They normally get rid of the whole staff. They might keep one or two people. They was like, yeah, we need, we need your experience. We need your know-how. You know the property. We need you. You, vary, you got all kind of experience. But we want you to be the supervisor, not the maintenance director. We already got a maintenance director. So the maintenance director came in. And you know that um, I wasn't able to do certain things anymore at, at a management discretion. That was taken away from me. It was kind of a hard pill to swallow, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, what I did was I went in here and I left. to find me better opportunities. So I'm thinking, this is what's happening right now. I'm thinking this man realized that, you know, I got just much experience as him. I'm the owner of this company. Now y'all done bought this company. Now I gotta dance to your, your music that don't digest too well with me. I'm going to have to leave. That's my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. But reason why I say it's my expert opinion, because I've been there too. And it's hard once you done been in charge of, of a company and you have somebody come in and take over and you got to answer to them. And with all the mess that went on last year, it was just bound to happen anyway. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna see some unfolding changes of events happening in the gig economy, dealing with the food industry, doing business in the gig economy. We done had a lot of changes happen so far. We talked about DoorDash, bought Caviar. We talked about Uber Eats, bought Postmates. I was working with Postmates when that happened this year. It took a year before I could even get on with Grubhub. Oh, it's not available in your area. It's not available in your area. Then once it was available in our area, it got oversaturated just like that now everybody's scrambling trying to figure out man how am i gonna make my, make make my money everybody's in panic mode let's start thinking proactive before we start being reactive and find different ways and different means on how we can make income come in told you in the other episode that restaurants fighting back. Mm-hmm. Fighting back. We tired of these outrageous charges. We can do the same thing. We can save some money here. I done said something, ladies and gentlemen. I done said something. 
we can save some money here. We we don't have to continue on getting pimped out by these app-based delivery companies. Getting pimped out. We're not finna get pimped out anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's getting ready to change people for real how we make our money. The question gonna be, am I a hustler or am I a business owner? Hustlers always survive. I done seen business owners sink, their boat sink. So, the number one reason companies go bankrupt is because of cash flow, people. Cash flow. All right, more money coming in than more, uh, more money going out than money coming in. Cash flow done put a lot of businesses out of business because that money got to keep moving around. That money got to keep circulating. That money got to keep being profitable. Not only profitable, it's got to be a profitability that is sustainable, that is a consistent income coming in. Or the ship going to sink. One of my episodes, I told people, look out now. It might be time to abandon ship and start other strategies. It's time, people, to start other strategies. It's time to get creative. It's time to look at how valuable we are. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting it hit right now. Let's see what we got. Let's see, it's going to be gravy. Uh, 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 well. Uh, I'm going to turn this one down. Mm-hmm. We get ready to end this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to wait till these people leave because I don't want to startle them. When I do my most famous exit scene. Smash that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Leave comments in below. Share this information. Let all the drivers know in our community here in OB. And I hope that others in other cities find out about what's going on as well with this information that we're bringing you. Peace and take care.